have you with us on a busy Wednesday night. I'm Tom Yamas, in for David. President Trump's trips to Dayton and El Paso in a moment, but we begin tonight with the outbreak of severe storms at this hour. Flash flooding from the plains to the east coast, and now a tornado. That twister touching down in Springfield, New Jersey today. Heavy rain flooding the streets in Baltimore. Cars, you see them there, underwater. And this huge water spout forming on Lake Erie. Severe thunderstorm watches across several states at this hour, including Philly and New York. ABC's Whit Johnson leads us off. Tonight, heavy downpours and damaging winds across the Northeast as millions head home from work. This is a really dangerous storm with heavy rain, lightning, gusty winds. This time lapse showing the severe weather moving through New York City. A confirmed tornado touching down in nearby Union County, New Jersey. This after a supercell brought large hail to parts of the heartland, the size of baseballs in South Dakota. And there's some that are a lot bigger than this one. Overnight, winds gusting to 70 miles per hour, toppling trees and ripping apart roofs in Grand Island, Nebraska. The Baltimore area hammered by a separate system that moved through Tuesday. Streets turning to rivers amid a flash flood warning. More than five inches of rain in some places. A lightning strike being blamed for this three alarm fire. Fortunately, the building was vacant. And Tom, the weather having a significant impact on air travel. Already more than 1,500 flight cancellations in and out of the U.S. Major delays on flights arriving to New York area airports like LaGuardia and JFK running three to five hours behind schedule. Tom? Cancellations and delays tonight. All right. Thanks so much for that, Whit. Let's get right to ABC Chief Meteorologist Ginger Z. And Ginger, mm -hmm. these severe storms are hitting right now? Right now. We are just in the thick of it, really, Tom. So I want to take you to the map. More than 100 severe storm reports already. You see the yellow boxes? That would be severe thunderstorm warnings, meaning that it is happening. It is imminent. 60-plus mile-per-hour winds anywhere from New Hampshire and Vermont down into Delaware. And yes, Philadelphia and New York City still included even into eastern North Carolina. But there is another cold front on the map. That's the one that we're tracking for tomorrow to bring segments of storms anywhere from, say, Elmira, New York, to Columbus, Indianapolis, and even Cincinnati. Okay, we'll stay tracking these storms throughout the night. Ginger, thank you. Now to a nation very much on edge, fearing another possible mass shooting. The headquarters of USA Today, take a look at that, evacuated over reports of someone with a weapon possibly inside the building. And a scary moment right here in New York, a motorcycle backfiring, causing panic and Times Square, hundreds rushing into nearby stores and restaurants for safety. Here's ABC's Chief Justice Correspondent Pierre Thomas. Today, people scrambling as the headquarters of USA Today is evacuated after reports of a man with a gun. Police searching the massive Gannett building floor by floor in McLean, Virginia, later determining it was a false alarm. Prayers have been answered. Everybody is safe. Overnight in Times Square, hundreds of panicked tourists and customers after hearing what sounds like gunfire. Certain they're under attack by an active shooter, they hide in restaurants and stores. It was like pretty much a stampede of people just sprinting as best they could. Another false alarm. Turns out that jarring sound was a motorcycle backfire. <laughs> and Tuesday, people literally running for their lives at a Utah shopping center, fearful a gunman is coming for them after a sound eerily like that of a shot fired pierces the afternoon. Within. 30 seconds, it was evacuated. The scene is cleared after authorities find a sign it crashed to the ground, making that troubling noise. And Pierre Thomas joins us now live. Thankfully, Pierre, authorities found all those were false alarms, but those incidents, examples of so many Americans on edge after those mass shootings, what are police telling you tonight? Tom, police are saying everyone did what they're supposed to do, take a potential threat seriously at places we once thought safe, from elementary schools to shopping centers and houses of worship. Tom? Pierre Thomas for us tonight. Pierre, thank you. We turn now to President Trump's polarizing visits to El Paso and Dayton, two cities still grieving over the horrific mass shootings that killed at least 31 people. The president and first lady meeting wounded victims in both cities, the White House keeping him mostly out of the public view. Protesters lining the streets in El Paso, many blaming his rhetoric for the domestic terror attack at a Walmart. A similar scene in Dayton where the mayor called for more action on gun control after saying he wanted to stay out of the political fray today. The president jumping right into the middle of it. ABC's Kira Phillips is at the White House. Tonight, President Trump landing in El Paso, keeping a low profile as he visits a community still reeling from the mass shooting that killed 22 people. Many people there angry, riot police on hand, 
our Marcus Moore is there. All of this happening right now, just a few steps from the from the hospital where a number of people have been recovering. Earlier today, Air Force One touching down in Dayton, a community paying their respects to lives lost while protesting the president's visit to their city to pay his. Miami Valley Hospital releasing this image of the president's visit there, greeting staff. The media not permitted inside. Dayton's mayor saying they were grateful for the president's visit, but says she confronted the president on gun reform. Do I think that we're going to see another mass shooting tomorrow or Friday? Probably, because Washington will not move. Former Vice President Joe Biden also taking on the president. It's both clear language and in code. This president has fanned the flames of white supremacy in this nation. But the president telling me his rhetoric is not to blame. What do you say to your critics that believe it's your rhetoric that is emboldening white nationalists that is inspiring this anger? So my critics are political people. No, I don't think my rhetoric has at all. I think my rhetoric is a very, uh, it brings people together. And Kira Phillips joins us now live from the White House. Kira, this morning, we heard it in your report, the president told reporters he wanted to stay out of the political fray, but this trip to visits with victims turned very political very quickly. It sure did. And as soon as he left Dayton, Ohio, he took to Twitter, tearing into the Ohio Democrats that he met with, saying that their news conference was a fraud. And as for Joe Biden, well, the president tweeting his speech today, Tom, was, quote, so boring. Kira Phillips for us at the White House tonight. Kira, thank you. We turn out of breaking developments north of the border and the manhunt for two teenagers wanted for the deaths of three people, including an American woman and her boyfriend. After weeks of searching, Canadian authorities believe they found the bodies of the suspects. The bodies discovered about 2,000 miles from where the victims were found. Here's ABC's chief national correspondent, Matt Gutman. That Canada-wide search for those teenage murder suspects ended today with the discovery of what are believed to be their remains. Cam McLeod and Briar Schmigelski's alleged murder spree began in British Columbia more than three weeks and 2,000 miles from where the bodies were found. They were accused of shooting American China Deese and her boyfriend, Lucas Fowler, point blank on July 15th, then driving to another part of British Columbia and murdering this college professor. Those deaths sparking a massive manhunt, surveillance cameras capturing the two at this big box store on July 21st, over a thousand miles away. Then a day later, residents in the remote town of Gillam, Manitoba, spotted the pair. SWAT teams blockading the town, finding the RAV4 the two were believed to have stolen. On Friday, August 2nd, that one critical piece of evidence was found. Items directly linked to the suspects were located on the shoreline of the Nelson River. That evidence was this damaged boat. It took only a few more days to find their bodies. Now, Canadian authorities, Tom, tell us that a coroner will determine how and when those two murder suspects died. And investigators still have to unravel the motive in these murders. Now, I spoke to the mother of one victim tonight. She said she was overwhelmed. Tom. The motive still the big question here. All right, Matt, thank you. Now to surprising new developments involving a powerful home explosion in Ohio. The blast now being investigated as a hate crime. The explosion leveling the home, you see it here. Investigators, though, finding racial slurs and a swastika spray painted on the property. Authorities say it's the second time this week someone tried to destroy the house. Here's ABC's Alex Perez. The explosion overnight in Sterling, Ohio. 911. Um, yes, there is a house behind our house that is completely engulfed in flames on fire. The home belonging to Angela Fraze. The African-American woman has lived here for more than two decades. Authorities discovering a SWAT sticker and racial slurs spray painted on the garage door and the neighbor's vehicles. It's really sickening. It is. It's sickening to do this to somebody's home. We could have been in there. Phrase says as she and her husband were away while the home was being repaired. Authorities had been at the house a day before the blast after they say someone intentionally tried to fill the home with natural gas and cause an explosion. This type of activity is very disappointing and thinking that, you know, one or a couple people could have that type of behavior. Tom, the homeowners say they do not intend on rebuilding for fear they could be targeted again. Authorities now offering a $5,000 reward for any information leading to an arrest. Tom? 
Alex Perez for us tonight. Alex, thank you. Next to a deadly police shooting sparking protest in Colorado Springs. Newly obtained surveillance video appearing to show a black suspect shot while running away from two officers. Police claiming he was reaching for a gun. The images may be disturbing. ABC's Clayton Sandell is in Colorado. This video raising new questions tonight shows 19-year-old Devon Bailey being chased by Colorado Springs officers investigating a robbery. His arms appear away from his body just before he goes down. But police say they opened fire on Bailey only after he reached for a gun. That account is not seen on the video, and it's not clear if Bailey, who was black, was shot before this clip begins. No justice, no peace, no racist. Protesters and one witness say they do not believe the police version. He didn't have anything in his hands. He did not brandish any type of weapon. The police officer did not try and chase him, did not try and tase him. He took out his gun and he shot him. Police say a weapon was found at the scene Saturday night. The video shows officers cuffing Bailey and attempting CPR before paramedics arrive. He later died at a hospital. Those officers who are now on leave were wearing body cameras, but the footage has not yet been released. The Colorado Springs mayor is now calling for calm until the investigation is complete. Tom? Clayton with that newly released video. Clayton, thank you. Now to an ABC News exclusive tonight, we are hearing from the hero bouncer in the mass shooting in Dayton where nine people were killed. Surveillance showing him rushing people into the bar and coming face to face with the gunman, telling us there was no way he was getting through that door. There's also new reporting on the shooter's final moments. ABC's Eva Pilgrim is in Dayton. Tonight, police searching for a motive in the Dayton mass shooting, investigating this video obtained exclusively by CNN. It appears to show alleged shooter Connor Betts entering a bar with his sister and a friend in shorts and a t-shirt before the massacre. Moments later, he was in tactical gear and opening fire. In this surveillance video, he's chasing people towards another bar. Watch as the gunman gets to the entrance, and that's when he came face to face with the bouncer, Jeremy Ganger. Did you look at him? Yeah, I looked him right in the face. He had a dense stare. Ganger had pushed as many people as he could grab into the bar. About 200 people were inside, so he stood in the door ready. I would have died before that guy came in. There's no way I don't let anyone get hurt. I was going to try to stay on my ground best I could. The next thing I know, he's being shot by the officer. In less than 30 seconds, dozens of people were hurt. Nine people were killed, including the gunman's own sister. Ganger, hit by shrapnel, was taken to the hospital where he stayed for three days. The medal still in his leg tonight. I am lucky. I'd do it again, though. You would do it again? Yeah. And Jeremy tells me he is planning to go back to work. He says if he doesn't go back, then the shooter wins, and he doesn't want that gunman to beat him. Tom? Eva Pilgrim with that exclusive interview tonight. Eva, thank you. Now to the case making national headlines. Centoya Brown released from prison after 15 years behind bars in Tennessee. A sex trafficking victim convicted of killing a man as a teenager. She claimed she feared for her life at the time. Her sentence commuted amid growing calls to set her free. And news tonight about a sweeping immigration crackdown in Mississippi. ICE arresting about 680 undocumented immigrants today. The raids involving hundreds of agents in six cities. Authorities calling it the largest operation of its kind in a single state. And back now with a family speaking out after their daughter, a college student, was killed by sharks in the Bahamas during a snorkeling trip. And now they have a warning for others. Here's ABC's Amy Robach. Tonight, Michael Lindsay is trying to come to terms with the loss of his 21-year-old daughter, Jordan. I remember kissing her on the forehead, and that's the last time I seen her. The college student killed in a shark attack while vacationing with her family and girlfriend in the Bahamas this past June. On the third day of vacation, the group decides to take a last-minute excursion through the Sandy Toes Tour Company to Rose Island. The Jordan and her mom, Cammie, decide to snorkel when the unthinkable happens. Jordan's like was screaming mom and then Cammie realized the first shark took like most of her right arm off like she was trying to swim with one arm. Cammie tries pulling Jordan to safety when a second shark attacks. Jordan said mom there's another shark coming and then it just hit the second shark it just took a giant chunk out of her and then that's the last thing like Jordan said. Since Jordan's passing Sandy Toad 
Cruise has reportedly added safety measures, including adding shark spotters to their tours. The company previously extending condolences and prayers for Jordan and her family, adding all reasonable steps were taken to prevent this very unfortunate incident, and our staff responded swiftly and in line with our emergency protocols and procedures. The family hopes to prevent this kind of tragedy from happening to anyone else. Else. There was no tourniquet, no, no, no nothing. There was no first aid kit. No first aid kit. What would you like to see every tour company put in place? Everyone should know like what, what to do in case there is some kind of big tragedy like that and then have the supplies to stop bleeding. Amy Robach with that terrifying story. We thank Amy for that. When we come Time now for our index and a millionaire fugitive captured in Mexico appearing in a California court. A judge denying bail for Peter Chadwick accused of strangling his wife in 2012 before vanishing in 2015 while awaiting trial. Chadwick was arrested in Mexico with help from tips after a police produced podcast about the case. An urgent manhunt developing tonight in Tennessee. Authorities searching for convicted kidnapper Curtis Ray Watson after he escaped a state prison in Henning. He is also a person of interest in the murder of a female corrections employee today and is considered extremely dangerous. And the warning to summer airline travelers after a computer glitch stranded thousands. British Airways canceling more than 100 flights in and out of London's three major airports. Look at those lines. After an issue with their check-in system, 20,000 passengers were left stranded. The airline has apologized.